All right, game two. We see the this is the trinity of top laners. We've spoken about this a lot. It's very available for blue team to go for. The champion that I like against it is this. Silas loves all of these ultimates and play into these lanes. Be okay. Uh, and you can absolutely love that you're going to get an engage ultimate. You're going to get Sejuani ultimate. You're going to get access to a lot of good tools uh, to play this champion. And then sometimes you can get some effects like this. I love the pairing here of Amumu and Aurora. This is something we've spoken about a lot. Amumu deal has the Amumu passive is anyone that he's attacked or dealt damage with his W or R is going to be afflicted with a true damage debuff. So all the magic damage that get that you get hit with, you add on an extra 10% of true damage. Aurora says, you guys are stuck right here. Renata says, okay, you're stuck right here. I'm going to funnel my ult through this. So we've spoken about these champions in tandem as a combination. I'm really excited to, to see this combined. Amumu and Aurora being the key part, Renata being the next one. Callista was banned, and that is normally who we like to pair, not only because we have Callista, Renata, just an insanely good bot lane by itself. Then you've got Callista for the escape for Renata and make sure you get that best ultimate off later in the game. It also means that you can go for a more like lethality based or, or more AD damage from one source and play through him early to allow Callista to be as good as they can for as long as they can. An enemy team can't afford to build armor because the rest of your team is going to be coming through with the rest. So I really like this position, what they've, what they've built for themselves though. Ash is probably the next best champion to go with it. A lot of setup, a lot of continuation. Absolutely love Weibo's draft. Um, LNG got the Trinity, but this is kind of cheap thrills, all right? It is very powerful, and I think any draft where you get these three champions, you're going to be very, very happy. But what, do, what have you given up compositionally? I love where Weibo's at right now. I love this draft. This bot lane two versus two is horrible to play against, and it looks like that that swap will come through for LNG. Vedius is talking about lane swaps here. Israel, Israel is one of the unsung superstars of lane swaps for a couple of reasons. One, his passive is actually one of the strongest combat passives in the early game amongst anyone in his class. So you can go in and actually take some fights as long as you're landing Q. You can continue fights. Hold on. We've seen Engage. They go on Aurora. Aurora's probably only can have access to the Q. So it's a little bit of trade back damage. We're going to see Crisp is coming in. They're going to say, have you taken it too far? Finally seeing some adaptations in mid lane and actually taking some combat here. I love it. Ash is by themselves in the bot lane. Ezreal Jax from LNG this time up in the top. They're sharing resources here. Giving the money to the Ezreal. Jax is just helping with the push. Jax is going to scale more off of levels than Ezreal. Ezreal is going to scale the most off of gold. Now they go here. They get the Demolish proc. They say, all right, let's just get a little chip of damage here. Deal as much as we can. Go proxy this wave. It timed the proxy. All right, this is something you want to do every single time. You notice how Sejuani did this little path here. Now she can come back and either path down or she can reset and fight for this and when you go for this play where you go for the reset you're saying level three let me come here i've got support plus jungle plus a teleporting top laner and we can actually take this fight 3v4 this is a very common play all right Jax has gone in he got level two same timing as before this time he's just in time for the cannon this does make a difference there is a chance that Jax is going to hit level three now during this dive uh which means weibo calls it off i like that they call it off. call it off they still get the win you don't need to force it the dive is a play that's available it is not a mandatory thing they have to come to you right because of this patch 1418 this turret is minus two plates this one hasn't even been scratched right even with a demolish proc you still haven't gotten a single plate off of it so weibo weibo gets the value that they want they get the two extra plates they still have ash down here now you have this delayed position where Jax is still down here he should get zoned off completely and he does not have the tools to go for a fight here they just flash away i hate this flash from crisp 
Uh, Crisp flashing backwards should have flashed laterally so that they could continue taking this fight. Uh, really, even worse flash there from Tarzan. Which means they're, uh, you know, again, we're talking about nerves potentially. Weibo has been the team that has been playing hyphy. They're, they are excited, excitable, and exciting. I'm here for it, but it's a lot of... Um, there's a higher level. There's a higher level. You you get to a point in a game like chess that there's no more leveling. Or the, the amount of leveling is like, I have 16 different openings I can play. And the only leveling you can do is if you know someone's going to play the same opening, you say, all right, I've got a line that I can play against you because I know what you're going to do. The problem is the guy who's playing it has studied that line all the way through and clearly has a plan. You're like, okay. You, you need to find a novel move on move 22 to try to like break this it's very very difficult when we're talking about trying to like out level the gameplay by being super super um high tempo for the sake of being high tempo it becomes fairly random whether or not the other team has some answers now if you're an underdog you love that randomness you you love that chance you'd want to play for it you want as many coin flips as possible when you're an underdog but if you've worked the whole year to say we are now the superior team fighting team, then you want to use that. You want to use that to your to your advantage. We saw exceptionally high execution uh, earlier on on scripted plays, but light once again not quite in the perfect position. Crisp flashing backwards away from the jacks is, was a huge mistake, right? When that engage happens and Jax jumps forward and Crisp flashes backwards, now the Jax can just change directions and you're stuck chasing and there's nothing you can do. If you instead flash laterally and you say, okay, I can now continue hitting you. The only way for you to get away from both of us is to go towards the river where we have our Amumu coming to come gank you. And now we get to consolidate our fight. That is how that should play out. And that is how these teams should be ready to look for for those kind of fights if you're playing for advantage. Is that they, well, Amumu with no flash is such a vulnerable target in the game. You have no inherent escape to yourself. You have All right, swaps, reverse swaps. They decide to take it to the Ezreal now. Ezreal is now going to have to take a moment to get away. Doesn't want to be facing against Ash Renata, two of the strongest early laners in the game. Ash Renata is going to be exceptional for team fighting later. This is how I like to start my drafts, by the way. Uh, you start with Renata, first chance, because it immediately necessitates a Callista ban, and then you're happy with multiple other choices that have both er good early games and good late games. The one window that is kind of weak for Renata, when you talk about, like, level, level 6, you only get one attack. Level 11, you get two attacks, and then sometimes three, depending on where their item builds are at. If you can ever get to a hyper late game with a level 16 Renata ult, that ult wins fights, period. You can take any fight in any pit second. You can arrive late because you don't care. That ult is going to break the game open because any carry that gets hit is going to ravage through their team. We do see some tools available, right? Obviously, lots of dashes. All five of these champions have a dash, and we have the cleanse on the Ezreal. He does have the press the attack build, which does mean that he can take some of these trades. And you can see... This is the big the big win. You're playing for XP uh, lead. They did get more CS for themselves because of how bot that bot lane play ended up playing out. So Ezreal's going to be a huge winner. They're going to be solid. And the big loser is probably Tarzan, right? The fact that you are now permanently behind uh, and none of, your, none of your teammates can claim a point of strength. None, none of them are stronger than their counterparts. Uh, so... That's gonna be that's gonna be a big, big spot. You see, Aurora is slightly ahead just from being a range versus melee. Hold on, we'll watch the fight execution. Sante pulls them away from the fight. They are able to continue. Breathe is gonna say no thanks to the rest of this fight. But LNG gets that fight, and it's that's what we're talking about. This Amumu ultimate, and if your team doesn't have a little bit more power to play from, a little bit more to go off of, and he doesn't even have his haunting guys right now. Those are the tools that you need to like really be able to have enough damage in these fights. And instead, you have to blow your ultimate. You're trying to use Cassante to get on the other fight. Hold on, we'll watch this. Flash forward, good good dodge there, forcing them back into into them. Now, what can they get on the return? Light is playing fairly aggressively. I like the 
the use of the window to hit a little bit harder. But Israel is going to be much stronger from here on out. Even without the Berserker Grease, he may choose to just go back and shop right now. Yeah, I like this play. He's saying, you know what? I could have been much stronger in this fight. Alright, 1,000 gold lead. The team fighting is going to scale for Weibo Gaming, so as long as as long as they can survive, they'll be okay. The problem this time is that LNG does not need to go into a team fight, right? This is not Renekton Nocturne. You now have Yone, Ezreal, and Jax, so you have set up a bona fide split pushing situation, and they don't need to take fights. They can go for split push. You've got Leona and Sejuani to protect the Ezreal, who's going to push up in mid lane. Then you've got Yone, who's going to do a side. Jax is going to do the other side. And if if they get to that three item point, then they're going to be strong enough to, to try to take fights. You want skirmish styles, right? You want to break up the fight, see if you can isolate members, and then go for the fight from there. What Weibo is going to want is you come to me, come to this spot now. And because they have Renata... They can still win those pits in the fight in the pit, right? These three ultimates, absolutely huge together. This one's going to try to supplement, and this one's going to try to peel away and isolate one character who you just don't want to jump in the fight. Probably Yone or Jax. Uh, and that's going to be Breathe's job this game. My team's got my back. They've got it. I've got to have their back. We'll see whether or not they're able to pull that off. Most likely, it's going to be something around the Baron pit. But against a split pushing team, and it looks like they're about to give up six Void Grubs, uh, it's looking real bad. LNG is in a really good spot right now. All right, so are you going to come in? Are you saying that, that it's now or never? Because if you give up these six Voids, then this, I mean, already five Voids is going to be a split push Doom. Uh, Jax and Yone are already set up. You don't even need the sixth one, but they're going to take it for utter domination and... And now, like, when, when these guys, when Jax and Yone get onto turrets, they're going to die quickly. This is, needs to be your engage here. Weibo, you need to take it. They just spent some cooldowns trying to get into the pit. They don't get enough. Alright, what are the outs? What are the outs? If I'm in-game, I'm looking for outs. If I'm a coaching staff, I'm looking towards what's it like next game. It's not as... Well, I'm, no, it is crucial. You want to be learning your opponents, downloading their tendencies, trying to figure out what what windows you can get and what you can tell your team to have some success as the as the series continues in this game you're looking for outs what can Weibo what outs can they create for themselves it's going to be tough they're they're going to have to commit to a fight on Baron but LNG doesn't need to take it they can poke at extra long way range with Ezreal who has access to cleanse Sejuani and Leona are going to shield for it. They are under no pressure to fight for a four dragon. They don't care about Soul or Elder. And in fact, they wouldn't even mind if if Soul and Elder were to go the other side. I'd be like, okay, you guys want to play 25 minutes down the road? We'll we'll play for split push and uh, rip all your turrets apart. One of the things that will help them out a lot, LNG for closing this out, is access to plates right now. The six, the six void gruff, void grub buff. When you actually get to use it on the turrets, is a big deal. Now Zeka can actually skip the fight here. He can just turn on his counter strike, and just say, "I'm going to take the turret. I want the solo gold. I want all the plates." They should look for the same thing down in bottom. Now we have seen from China, we have seen a play used on red side as a defense against Rift Herald. So if we see a push come in, right? If LNG goes for this Rift Herald, for example, which they probably I mean, they can. There's no need. They can take everything on the map because they're winning by so much. This right now, potential point of weakness. This is probably Weibo's best chance of getting into this game. Leona's flashing forward. I don't like it at all. Hold on. That's going to be a huge Renata ult. They get to hit everyone. They overlap the the Omumu and the Renata. But they get a revive. Aurora fights over the edge. This was... This was... Hong, Hong cannot go for that fight. 
they're still ahead enough that it looks like they get just enough but they end up giving up the dragon they end up giving up trade back kills just for one Will that change anything? I don't know. Tarzan being dead means they almost definitely LNG will go for this Herald. So the play on bot side. What we're looking at is a shield of vision in this area. And while the enemy team goes to push, the reason that they want to push for this turret is because with both of these turrets standing, you can crash and then you can take the Rift Herald from bottom to mid. Right, and this tends to be more effective at opening up the map because it gives you access to this whole area. Whereas if you don't break mid and you break this, then suddenly you end up with a collection area that the enemy team can sort of just hold waves, dare you to come into. They can play for that as a position of strength. So a lot of teams go and they play for bot lane off the Rift Herald. You see these red wards or these wards here from red team. If they can just get rid of these lingering wards, come in and fight for vision in this area, then you might be able to create a defense for the push if it comes through bot lane. So if you're Weibo and if you're any team, you should be looking at this area of the map if you're on red team, right? This area of the map if you're on blue team, saying how will we set up for our defenses if they go for one of the most predictable plays, Herald mid or Herald bot, most likely in bot. How do we set it up so that we can control this area and maybe get the fight that we're looking for? We already know that they are inclined to split. They want to send Yone and Jax into these waves and take take as long as, as possible to, to do it. That might mean that we don't get a committal to one of these plays and probably works in LNG's favor. That they don't need to do anything. They can just hold on to this Rift Herald for the longest amount of time. Good timing here. This is something from last game, right? After 15 minutes, you want to take that red buff as soon as possible after 15 so that you can get it again as close to 20 minutes as possible. All right, so positionally, we're looking for Weibo to try to set up some kind of counterplay. Ideally for you, there's a dragon that is of some amount of combat importance. You, you have an idea that they want to play in this area. So can you create a point of strength? Can you bait them into, into a little bit of an overreach? You have all of the catching tools in the world, right? Ash Arrow is a guaranteed hit off of a Rift Herald crash. The, is that enough to allow Amumu and Aurora to get into range? You see how Leona's gov covering against this? They're, the, they're here to play for this push. The ward already in the tri bush, already zoning. You see Sejuani's coming as well. Even Ezreal is hovering after pushing mid. You see him hovering to the right side. Get a little bit closer. He only comes back as it's time to take the wave. So they're going to go in and control this. Learn from this, guys. If you're playing in your game, solo queue, pro, doesn't matter where you're at. The team sets up to play for their strength and say, all right, we're ready to push. We've got this lead for ourselves. We're going to move up. And we're going, to, we're going to shadow our carries as they start farming. Right? We don't need to go back and go pick up a wolf camp. If you're Sejuani, the value of this wolf camp is nowhere near the swing value of being able to turn a fight by staying, uh, by being in position already. All right, six void grubs. They come out. The 12 will spit out, and they'll take this down. Or they can go for another one. They may not. This might be the moment that they say no thanks. Right, they're not going to ride this one in. They're just going to let it take again because they don't want that predictable counter engage. Jax gets one. You don't want to trade if you're LNG. So Weibo's going to be kind of happy that they get a trade back here of any of any form. A little bit of an overplay from Zika. Scout's locked in. You see that? That guy is in the zone. All right, so you've broken mid. Mid gives you access to the rest of the map. There's no more Rift Herald to defend, so these wards will probably be allowed to dissipate. Um, we'll see whether or not they try to go again. That is their only point of strength. So uh, This is a big overplay from Jax. You don't need to continue here. The fact that he's able to come back and get this kill is actually insane. It's so strong. 
Renata not being able to get the the bailout. There's a lot of tools that were there that could have made that really bad for LNG. So again, you know, these teams are not perfect. They make mistakes. Can you capitalize on it? That's going to be the big, big thing. All right, bait into the step. They're going to fight for vision in this bush. Use Ash to set up. There we go. We get the cleanse out. Step one, get cleanse out. Now fight. They're going to say they're going to keep on playing for this territory and they want to get the fight right in this area. If you're LNG, you should just give this. Give it. Fight for mid prio. Fight for northern quadrant. You're going to take this. All right. You're going to take this or wall this off and you're going to use it to go fight for the Baron and isolate them. Basically say, okay, you don't have, you don't have access to your ult. But uh, Tarzan finds a window. This is fantastic. You find them in the middle of their rotation. Renata even able to hit a uh, ultimate there. It means that they're able to continue this. They're going to chase down Sejuani. You've given them what, what they wanted. Any amount of rotation through this, this is off limits. You cannot go through this. You are asking to die. Look at the red vision around this area. They see you walk in. They know you're going. You're also giving them the window when your team says, we don't want to fight. We just want to stone them on this side, which means don't give them a fight. Basically show them the hand like, nope, not over here. You shall not pass. It's not about contesting for a fight or saying, hey, let's take this. Or, mm -mm. You just take that area. You control the northern quadrant for yourself. Let Jax push and then you rip apart their base, right? Because this will be gone. This will be at half health. You'll have control over this much of the map, right? You're talking about two thirds of the map is yours to gain all the resources from, to farm from, and you'll have that big lead. This was a huge, huge mistake in positioning to even be near this corridor. They're mortal, they're mortal. Guys, they're gonna make mistakes, especially on the highest stage. I mean, second time that we've seen Leona with an over eager jump. All right, so we've seen over eager plays here. We've seen positioning mistakes from, from light. Uh, what's, you know? What are, what are we looking at as a team? How do you adjust this? If you're a coach, if you're a player, what would you like to hear? You may not know if you've never been in a pressure situation like this, but sometimes you've been there, you've seen it. What was something that, that worked for you? You know, what kind of person are you? What works for you? These are things that coaches should have diagnosed and it's why ex-players often don't make for the best coaches because ex-players are only gonna know what happened for them. Right? How did I have success or how would I have seen it differently? And they may just make a sort of rash, reactive adjustment based on what worked in their own life. Whereas when you have coaches and especially sports psychologists, you can talk about mentality, psyche, like what, what, how do you identify what, what a person needs in this stressful environment? and figure that out so that you can help them be the best version of themselves, right? Because you're not going to get perfect play. What you can hope is that you play your very, very best and that you optimize, right? How to rev the engine, take those moments where you go to 7,000 RPMs, but then bring it back down to coasting because you're going to have to play great in those great moments. Make sure that you're not burned out beforehand. All right, Aurora handling Yone. She can basically only hope to pick up the waves here but you see a very defensive itemization here from yone blade of the rune king quicksilver sash saying that i don't want to be isolated i don't the one of the only ways i die here is if i get the first effect on me uh, it does allow him to build into a crit item later so we'll see if he goes for that um you get the double you know amplification and and we haven't seen it yet but fourth item infinity edge right after you after you've already built these Four items that have modal elements, offense and defense. Blade of the Rune King that slows them, that keeps you alive, keeps you healed up. Just also very good with the kit in general to get you ex extra access to your Q3 for more knockups, chain CC, etc. Uh, QSS allows for that too, right? So Yone is going to be in a really comfortable spot. Jax has a huge lead over Cassante, and this is only going to get worse for the Cassante. You see the Sundered Sky. Uh, basically, he's going to come in every eight seconds and say, all right, pop, hit you in the face. So every other every other W, essentially, 
His Rennie's just going to jump on you, get that one hit off, and that tends to be more than you can do back to him. And so it's very hard for Cassante to play for these waves. That puts a lot of stress on the Aurora. Uh, Aurora can one-shot waves, right? She can kill him, pop him real quick. And they might go for some effect where they say, all right, send Aurora to the wave, clear it very, very quickly, and then see what we can get. Engage here with no Aurora teleport to follow up. This feels very weak. They must think that they've got the enough of an angle, but I think you're playing into LNG's hands here. LNG positioning very well in this fight. Gala, much better position this time. You see him? There you go. You see how he's kiting? He's kiting to reposition himself so that he's still behind his team. Not only... <gasps> Except there. Going forward and Cassante seeing the window to go forward. That's incredible play by Breathe to realize that you have that window to go in. Uh, I hate the engage there by Weibo. Maybe they're thinking this is about as good of a chance as we're going to get. So in that sense, I guess it's not that bad. I take it back. Not that bad. You see, you see kind of a, a window, but Aurora just spent her ultimate, right? Like this is, this is not ideal. Aurora can come over here, try to jump over this wall. Oh, that, that auto attack was so bad. Tank assassin support fighter bruiser. All right, 4,000 gold lead should be enough for LNG to just split this map <clears throat> in half. You do see a lot of resources down. Teleport's going to be down for both of the solo laners. Basically, everyone had to get into that fight, so those are going to reset. You're probably going to see Jax and Yone stay a little bit closer to the team this time. You may not go all the way far out to the sides of the map until the teleports are a little bit closer. One of the only ways that you lose this game is if you're Jax and you path here, and at this moment, you have a predictive Baron steal attempt or start from Weibo. Saying, hey, look, like maybe someone's going to show up to this in the next 20 to 30 seconds. And the person who shows up there is not going to have teleport available. So is our best chance actually a preemptive strike where we go for this play? You see really good vision control. They've protected their quadrant. They've kept that mid turret alive. And now Jax has a lot of reason to want to stay down here. I'd say the window's probably gone. Once he gets to the wave, you know that he will be able to get to the next wave and start hitting your turret by the time you can actually effectuate anything on the other side of, of the map. And it really puts your team in a hard spot where you're five versus four at Baron, sure, but they don't need the enemy team doesn't need to take the fight. They can just poke you from a distance. They've got Sejuani ultimate, Leona ultimate, Ezreal ultimate. That can all hit you from long range on top of Yone who can just scoop in, get some damage, and then scoop back out. So it would be a really tough situation to be in, uh, but it's one of the beauties of adding Leona and Ezreal onto this trinity right here. Because with the split push, just super easy to get around the map. Ezreal can influence side lanes if he needs to in a pinch, if you ever need to recollect. Uh, but he can focus on trying to chip down enemies, get, get them as low as possible from long range. And make it so that there's never really a window to come back and attack. You see him push up, always mid. It's going to be mid. And they're just going to constantly try to draw this line further and further. right? Is Until they can get deeper wards for themselves up onto the beach first. And then you're going to try to go deeper. Maybe even try to check these off before they go for the Baron themselves. Uh, because there is no rush, right? The longer this game goes with the Jax and the Yone and the side lanes, you're just going to be super happy with them. Especially with a level lead over Aurora. Uh, Cassante can hold his own. It's going to get a little bit harder against the Jax. Um, but Aurora cannot, right? Aurora is going to have to just pluck the wave and then and then leave, right? You see her going to the weak side where there is no Jax. She just collects the wave as it's being pushed into her area. And now she'll come and rejoin the team. But every time that this rinses and repeats advantage lng because you get to do it first you get to approach the wave first that means priority so every time that red team is capturing a wave it's in this area so you already have control 
the beach wards are going to start moving up and importantly all the wards that were laid behind by any red member has now whittled away and this is the thing that you need to do when you're looking at this protracted siege across multiple lanes the magical time is three minutes the reason you have to do it for three minutes is because you need all of the wards to fall off you basically need to suffocate the enemy team and say we will give you this area of the map but for the next three minutes we are not letting you out and by not letting you out and by taking the time to go and check for all the bushes make sure you get all the control wards that might have been left behind then you can say okay now we know that nothing is lingering behind us there is no trap ward and that's why three minutes is the magic number for these fights when you're trying to set up for this baron they've accomplished it but you can see anytime that you go to recall there's a chance they come back in i don't like hong's position hong is spending any amount of time near the dragon pit and i hate it right like these three wards are inconsequential compared to the power of the baron especially when you talk about your team fighting for this dragon is giving Weibo a way back into this game saying hey would you like us to team fight you miss you know Weibo with your team fight team no no obviously not uh so i really don't like these moves at all right now by lng playing for this dragon they must say that hey we can just get even stronger with more baron but or with more uh, dragon buffs but this was risky this was a risky play you moved all your vision you gave up everything that you had over on this side and now your momentum is on the weak side of the map so they've made the call they've made the call to go for a 10 minute window right essentially essentially three minutes ago they suffocated this area and you can see that we've had weibo fighting back for the vision on this side they should start this you won't get a better chance right now start this thing Sejuani's on the wrong side of the map Jax is inclined to stay a little further he can't really push further because any further is going to be into the turret so Cassante has the advantage on the teleports there you can even let the Jax push in and you can teleport second match and just let the turret kill off the rest of it they end up not going for it I don't know if they're going to get a better moment this is this is one of those games where sometimes you just need to take your shot rather than be suffocated out uh that said you know we've seen we've seen leona try for a little bit too much maybe it happens again Locket picked up from Leona saying, hey, the only way we lose is if you are able to get all the way onto us. There's a Randuin's Omen on this Sejuani. I don't know what they're expecting to get from Randuin's Man. You know, it's the other team that should be buying Randuin's right now. Weiwei's going to start muscling in. All right, this is what you want if you're Weibo. You've created this fight. Tarzan missed, so they're playing for the spot. No, they're trying to say, hey, bait you into more crunch. All right, I love this. Say, hey, let's put the pressure back on you. Make you go in. Aurora's going to come take this fight. They're going to go in. They're going to get the pops. They get the Baron, and they got everything. I love that play from Weibo. So, so nice. We're gonna be able, we're gonna be able to go over this. You make the pressure for the Baron. You extract for a moment when the Baron's at three thousand. It has to be at least three thousand health. Three to four thousand is best. Enough health that the enemy team can't just burn it, right? Then they're in the pit, and now they're wondering, wait, is this Baron low enough that we can that we can be the ones to take it? Thanks for the leash, guys. And instead they just wrap back around and say no we actually are playing for the fight we just wanted you to come back in a little bit too much so you see that they don't go for anything along this line of scrimmage they say come back in come back in we kite we're going to come back around and look for the engage here now that Jax has jumped out of the pit this was the call the Jax is the one who overstepped he went too far outside thinking that they were going to go for a collapsing fight rather than just taking the dotted eye get the baron and then go for the rest of the fight so now they come back beautifully stun, uh, timed stun there from the Renata 
and they get the fight that they're looking for. Beautifully, beautifully done. Uh, I'm seeing more and more of this from, from these teams. Preparation, real plays being being prepared for, for these intense situations. This is the main reason, by the way, why we want Riot. And if you guys can do it, you know, hashtag Riot, please. To give us a functional chrono break for, for professional teams that are practicing and a functional practice tool. The fact that you can't just... Uh, what, what pro teams would love is to be able to take this game state, download it, and play it, and play it, and play it, and play it. Because, yes, while the exact champions and the exact amount of items in the game change, the situation comes up a lot. Who can actually commit to this pit? And then what do we do from here? Right? And then you play that out. You can that playing out that mini game 40 times during a practice is much, much more effective than playing a scrim block. All right, Weibo's saying, hey, we're the team fight team. We want to take this. You gave us the Baron. We've got this. We're going for the end. Uh, everything possible is going to be on Jax right now to try to get this big stun. Aurora comes in and isolates the fight. We see a big damage. Look at the positioning. You see them holding their team fight formation. Look at this. They're staying together. Enemy team's trying to split apart. Is there enough damage from the Yone from the Jax? It looks like there's going to be just enough. Jauhu? Is there a teleport available? No, Jax's is not quite up yet. They did break the top lane, so we have inhib for inhib. Bit of chip damage, you see Zika Zik is stacking up his passive, making sure to get that attack speed up and making sure that he's got access to the third on hit for a little bit of extra burst coming into the fight. You don't need to chip it up. Aurora tries to break it up. I would have preferred it to be a little bit closer. Now they do get a little bit tight right here. You see that? That tight formation, Ash a little bit too close. And we talked about Light's positioning in team fights being a little bit suspect earlier. It ends up biting them right there uh, because Jax is able to get a three-man stun off, which is unreal. This is pretty hype. So LNG was able to come back on the map off of that play and use the strength to go get the soul. So Weibo now much, much harder for them to find that full on engage. That said, there is a base turret broken. And with base turret broken, you can create slow pushes that are end game, game ending threats. So anytime that Jax goes and pushes a wave to here and doesn't clear it all the way in, if you allow that wave to stack and simmer and just say, hey, we're going to play you for 5v5 uh, for a protracted siege around this, for example, it takes a while. It takes about two and a half minutes for that wave to stack up and start pushing into the base, but it can become a game ending threat. And since the super is on the opposite side of the map as the next objective, the Baron, it's much easier for Weibo to play this out because they want to push out into this area anyways. They're gonna take these supers, try to control this area. Uh, that means that LNG's best response is going to be to push middle and try to force them into their own quadrant. You're trying to force Weibo into their own northern quadrant where they get sort of barricaded in, uh, sort of locked behind the storm doors. Then with mid prior, you can send someone over, fix the bot waves. You can come back over, create a push if you need to, and never really give a huge opening. So you're going to see them right here fighting for that mid lane prior. Don't need to do anything up here. It's up to the enemy team to send someone and start showing pressure uh, up in the top. They're probably just going to let it collect and then pick it up with an Aurora. With the movement speed coming out from it as well as you highlighted, Kobe. So probably picked up a dark zeal and was like... Yahoo's been playing out of their mind. They've got 10 stacks on the Magi's, which means that they may be able to find that much better of a of a pick for themselves. You see the Abyssal Mask coming in from uh, Amumu. So this is our favorite type of composition coming into this world. It's an Abyssal Mask Amumu Aurora comp. Absolutely love the power. Jax has managed to... to do some significant chunking here, but uh, Cassante might say, hey, there's a spot where I'm actually not going to take any damage in this fight, and Unending Despair is just going to be more than enough for me to, to be able to hold on to this wave and sort of keep you here. 
right? I can, if I can keep you here and stop you from ever threatening to flank, then my team might be able to get some sort of action in. All right, here we go. Big teleports are coming up. They've fought for this area. They don't have mid prior, which means that this fight's going to be really hard to execute for Weibo Gaming. LNG is probably just going to win with their wallets right here. The uh, Mountain Soul coming into effect. Yona saying, I'm going to control this bot wave to make sure that we don't accidentally lose because we have enough for the win. Two kills down, uh, two for one, just the support biting the dust means that they can pick up this bear. And they're, they're going for the slowest possible uh, guaranteed win here. Double supers in the top wave means Aurora's going to go pick it up. Yoni's going to go pick up this bot wave super to make sure that they don't get backdoored, that they don't get anything. Uh, they're going to wait for Leona to come back up, which is very nice min-maxing. Just getting a fifth member with the extra buff. With the extra power of the mountain soul, it is LNG who win this so now the big problem here, and this is the problem with taking the slow approach. Yes, you have a checkmate game state, and anything that Weibo could do, you have an answer for. The problem is that the stakes are super high. You're giving the team fight team a chance to fight for Elder, and this this Elder Drake. You know, with a team fight team, if you go into coin flip territory on this elder, it, all it takes is one smite, and you will lose the fight. That elder will burn through your baron, so, through your soul, through your baron. There's nothing that you're going to get enough out of it. So, if you're LNG, this is the moment where someone, one of your shot callers, needs to say, "All right, all right, guys, we did what we came to do. We got to the spot. Let's play really tight. Let's keep really good focus and finish this out clean." Right? Because that's important. You want to calm your team down. It's like Joe Montana before the drive. Just calm your guys down. Prepare them for the for the task at hand. Don't assume that everyone's in the right headspace. Because there's a lot of pressure at stake here. You're down a game as the favorites. You might as well, right? You can always walk in towards that inhibitor on the top side. You don't need the Baron's up minions to do that right now. LNG pushing in. Light has his flashback up, so can try and defend against All right, Zika's gonna take it slow over here. Normally you'd want that bot wave to be a little bit slower. LNG over pushed, which means all they have is a cannon right now as Jax is going up to the wave. Weibo is able to slide over. That cannon is going to be enough though because they've got the six void grubs as well. I forgot about those. Six void grubs means that they were able to stay in range. Uh, Zika is going to start picking up that top wave. No reason to stick around here. Yone is in the mid, so this is really good. I haven't seen this in a long, long time, guys. One, one, three is optimized when you have this split push and you're looking for this end game formation 131 is not it you want 113 with your best diver in the middle right yone is the one who can join fights from either side without using teleports he's got a long range ability with the spirit tether to get into those fights it looks like they say you know what we're just going to play for the big gold lead let's pick up our blue buff let's go for this and uh we're going to fight over elder and we're going to keep Jax in position now Jax has to decide whether or not to use teleport here uh and if you're going to use it where to so i don't know how Weibo are going to do it this time around but they're crafting something right now working in their way they're in position you've given you've given them the best situation for their for their coin flip lng needs to be patient fix the waves get the waves into position Jax can take some vision, but you have to be careful that enemy team might be able to go and engage on you. All right, they found the Jax. Tarzan's getting a huge amount of chunk damage. There we go. We found a window. They might be able to fight the Jax, but Jax goes Zonia, so that's the end of the fight. Good job by Jax, saying I can t I can absorb a huge amount of, of this damage. Hold on. We'll see the rest of the fight. Playing out Cassante being Cassante. Wait, second time again that Scout's not with the rest of the team as the fight's, as the fight's finishing. Why, why is this? All right, now he's back there. Good job. Nice micro movements there. That's so nice from Scout. You see that? Using the W, then sidestepping one more time. Pushing out. Now you have the winning play. Gala calls for the push in bot lane, and that's going to be GG. <sighs> Woo! The series, man. 1-1. One, one. I'm pumped. I'm entertained. I'll see you in game three.